Scientists say men want to get rich subconsciously because they know it improves their love life. So we never are trained social skills. So I'm gonna show you, the. I'd say the biggest return, I'll give you an example. I went to a Berkshire Hathaway meeting years ago, my first one, and I sat way up high because it was hard to get seats. And I remember, I always had mentors that told me to be social, and I didn't, who here is just, sometimes you don't feel social. You just wanna be a veggie, veggie. I can see some of you just vegging out, okay? And I was at this eight hour thing. It starts, you get there at like five in the morning, you run, has anybody ever been to Berkshire Hathaway? It's the biggest investor meetup in the world. You run through the thing to get, it's all these like, you know, adult men wooing, wooing and hawing over Warren Buffett's talk. So I was tired. It ends around three o'clock, it was like 2.45. And I was like, oh. and I'd been sitting next to this older dude. And um, I just, something in me, I was like, always be social. The asymmetrical return means you do this much energy and you make that much return on your investment. So I was like, Ty, you sat next to this dude, talk to him. I don't remember what I said, but I started talking and it was in right when I had launched my, I launched my brand on Book of the Day. It was before here in my garage, it was in 2013. I launched a newsletter. And at the time I BCC'd 20 friends. I said, I'm gonna read a book a day and I'm gonna summarize it for you. And I put 20 emails of just buddies of mine. And then I said, if you like this, forward this to a friend. It started to grow from 20 BCCs to about 150, 200 people. And I would send an email every day. It was a lot of work. I'd spend three hours a day reading a book and writing out a cool summary. Fast forward, six months into it, I'm at this meeting. I don't feel like being social. I'm sitting next to this dude. Now I still know him to this day. Start talking to him. Turns out I'm like, and we were high up. So I didn't think there would be like, good people high up, because like all the billionaires were sitting down, you could see them all around Warren Buffett. And he goes, uh, and I told him about my book of the day, I'm like, yeah, I do book summaries. He's like, oh, I love books. And I was like, you wanna be, I used to have on my phone, my website, I'm like, you wanna sign up? I don't wanna spam you, but if you put your, so he went on his website, put it in. No, it's way before Mentorbox, about three years before that. So, da 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 da, I leave sending out my daily emails. A month later, I get an email, a reply, and it was like, hey, I was the guy who sat next to you, okay? And I could see like his name was also the domain. Okay, it turned out he's one of the richest guys in the world. He's like the number one entrepreneur. He's, I'm not sure if he's a multi-billionaire, but he's almost the richest guy in Germany. He was a German guy at a thick accent. Sends me, I Google him, I'm like, holy fuck, I'm sitting. Then I told some friends who go to Berkshire Hathaway, they're like, oh, you were sitting by Warren Buffett's friend. I'm like, what? I'm like, typing. Keep sending my emails out. Two weeks later, hey man, I want you to come to Germany. I have 14 CEOs, I'm gonna fly them all in, and I want you to give a talk. And I flew. And I remember, by the way, some people, I've talked about this, don't be a pussy with traveling. It's, we're now sitting in a luxury chair in the sky. And people are like, I don't know, I've got to go to the airport and wait. I'm like, bro, what planet are you on? Pop, 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 pop. People used to go, it, it, I just read the book about the guys that had to go from England under uh, Argentina and come back. It was one of the biggest scandals in the 1800s. Like 400 men went, like four came back. Took them 12 years to get back. They all died. They were eating each other, all this shit. We can now go to London, you know, and be back the same day almost, 24 hours. So I remember telling Maya, who's my COO now, but back then she was just like my right hand. And I was like, I have to be somewhere on Wednesday. And he invited me to speak in Monday, on Monday in Bonn, Germany. And I, I remember my mentors were tough guys. They're like, don't be a pussy. I said, my, I'm gonna try experiment. I leave Sunday, land Monday, speak at night, fly back Tuesday for my Wednesday thing. I was like, I'm gonna try experiment. What happens if you just do a quick thing? It was a glorious meeting. I'm still friends with this guy. He's a powerful person. Two lessons, talk to strangers and don't be afraid to travel. I read books on the way, never think about travel. My next door neighbor in Beverly Hills, one of the richest guys in, in America, 
He told, I was like, what's your secret? He built a big clothing brand, sold it to JC Penney. Rich guy, owns a lot of Beverly Hills, most expensive real estate in the world. And I asked him, he's in his 60s, I was like, what's your secret? What was your daily habit? He said, well, I'll tell you my weekly habit. Sunday, he's like, I had eight kids. Sunday, I would get on an airplane at LAX. I'd fly to Milan, Italy. Um, I would look at the styles and I would come back on Tuesday or Wednesday. And then I could be with my kids Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all of the morning Sunday before I flew again. I was like, well, that sounds like a tough trip. How often do you do it? He goes, oh, every week. I said, how many years did you do that? I said, oh, my whole career, 20 years. He said, nobody was willing to do it. And I was like, eh. I just figured out fun stuff to do on the plane. I met people, I read. And he's probably worth, I don't know, 500 million to $5 billion. Tough people make the money. You're never gonna beat a tough dude or a tough woman. Some people, I was like, you wanna come to Vegas? There was people like, you're too busy. I'm like, we'll fly and come back the next day. So two lessons, talk to strangers and do not be afraid to get on a plane at any moment. It's the safest travel. The last time someone's died in American commercial traffic death was like 2013. Nobody dies. They're safe as hell. You're way safer than driving here. So social skills. I'll give you one thing and then we'll go practice it tonight. We'll talk more on social skills. And this directly makes you money. In fact, Jim Collins, you ever heard of him? Good to great, he wrote, he's the kind of the most, he's the new Drucker. Uh, I, I, I had him mentor me once, I had a little session with him. And he wrote the best-selling business books of modern time, Good to Great, Built to Last. He has in there, the luckiest thing that will ever happen to you for making money is not a business idea, it's not catching a, tr a trend. It's who you will accidentally meet at some point in your life. And the richest guy I've ever had dinner with, Steve Ballmer's like, you know, most of my success is like, I happen to be in the same dorm as this kid named Bill Gates. The best money story, by the way, some of you like money. What's the best mo investment of all time? Huh? Buying the copper pot? Yeah, the Coca-Cola recipe. Okay. Who's the person that did it? Let's do modern, the last 50 years. Greatest investment. Apple, Amazon, nah. One luck event kid was at a dorm at Harvard, met another kid, said, I'll, not Zuckerberg. He said, I'll give Zuckerberg like eight, 10 grand to run the servers in exchange for a large chunk of the company. It was Eduardo Severin. He gave Mark Zuckerberg, it wasn't Mark Zuckerberg. Eduardo Severin made, I, nobody knows the number. He f left America. IRS changed the tax law because of one kid. He worked approximately one hour and made between eight to $18 billion. You know how much money that is for one hour of work? He smoked everybody. What was it? He talked to strangers. There was other kids in there, in the dorm with Mark Zuckerberg that didn't talk to him. There was other Steve Baum, your shyness has already robbed you for sure of seven, maybe eight, possibly nine figures. Let me repeat that. The shyness, the social anxiety, the, oh, I'm an introvert. I have to recharge my batteries. Who believes that's good psychology? You think that's real science of introversion? This is, let me give you a prime example of how stupidity spreads on social media. Who here has heard that an introvert needs to recharge their batteries? That's the definite. Who made that up? But who's, who studies psychology? It's the most common bullshit lie that gets spread around social media that allows introverts to have excuses for not overcoming what's more likely anxiety. You don't believe me? Who invented the word introversion and extrovert? Carl Jung, read his book. He defines it in the fucking book. It's on iBooks and Amazon. Nobody reads the sources anymore. That's why you all are lied to. You listen to influencers who regurgitate stuff, but they didn't read it either. I go to the source. Carl Jung said, that's not what an introvert or extrovert is. An extrovert processes the world through his exterior senses. The introvert processes it through inner thinking. Stephen Hawking maybe was an introvert. He was paralyzed. He thought about the universe in his head. That's kind of introverted energy. Extrovert is me, 
I learn by actually talking with you all. I'm glad you all are here. I'm not just doing you a favor to be here. You're doing me a favor. As I talk and interact, I learn. So who here is bought into, I'm an introvert, so I'm just not the kind of person who talks to people? Strangers. Be honest. This should be half the hands. Who here has missed an opportunity because they haven't talked to a stranger? Who here has ever seen the man or woman of their dreams, but you're too much of a pussy to talk to them? Why? Strangers, you can't be embarrassed by strangers because they'll never see you again. Men are funny. What do men say? Red pill men. <laughs> Women shouldn't be president because they're more what? More emotional. Oh, the most emotional people, if you define it by illogical, is men. Men go to war for a cause they don't believe in to die for rich men when they're, in the, they're from the ghetto. If men were logical, all the, all the people in America would be like, I ain't gonna fucking go into Vietnam. You know who told, got in big argument with my, my grandfather who was pro-Vietnam War, domino theory, run by all the people in America, presidents? My grandma. I thought women weren't logical. My grandma said, why are you fighting in a war? We don't even know what's going on there. Leave it alone. So men, on a logical basis, see women that they're attracted. Women don't fall in love as quickly just by looks. Men do. And men puss out the most. So if you were logical, wouldn't you be a robot and say, I am a robot. There is a woman I am very attracted to. I am in a setting where if I am rejected, no one will ever notice. But you still are a pussy. Therefore, you're equally illogical or more so than women. Don't go down that deep red pill. Red pill is 80% true and 20% massive garbage, and you don't know which 20 is correct and what's the truth. Women are more emotional, but not more illogical. And God help you if you ever meet a dude who tells you about his PhD or his engineering degree. You have met an emotional bitch, trust me. You how oh, emotional bitch. Hey, video game kid. Hey, porn watcher, why don't you go meet a hot girl that looks like the girl on porn? He's afraid because he's dominated by emotions. So in my third pillar, for both men and women, but especially men, it's harder for me to speak to the experience of a woman because I'm not a woman. I try to give my insight to women, but I can't tell you the deep experience of a woman. But I can tell you the experience of a man. And that is, put on your big boy pants, talk to strangers a lot. So I have this thing in 40 moves, you talk to 40 people, strangers, in the next 40 days. And once you do that, and you put a little thick skin, you then talk to 40 people a week. And then you do 40 people in one day. And when you get to that level, now you're at a black belt level, all things in your life that suck begin to go away. One chess move. You meet somebody like I met. By the way, when I flew to Germany to meet that German guy, you know what he told me? Ty, I'm in online, he owns a lot of the magazines, print magazines. He said, I think this business is dying. I think a good business is to sell educational stuff online. This is me in 2013. Ty, I think this is something, let me show you some tricks on how I became a publisher of information do you think that was a helpful meeting for me? Did I make any money in selling, publishing information online? I think I may be the most in human history of revenue from selling online education from an individual person. Grant Cardone maybe has, I've stopped for three years kind of. True, who's gonna try 40 strangers in 40 days? Don't just make it all about women. I was just with Mystery. He's the most famous pickup artist. He's a true genius. I've gotten to know him. I've read his books for years, but he's great at just talking to people, including men. Including men. It's a big mistake that men conserve all their energy and only talk to women. In fact, what Mystery, one of the surprising things, he pretty much only likes to talk to women when they're with men. He said, all hot women are protected by men. So he knows how to disarm. He does, he's like, my favorite is a five set. Two girls and three guys. He's like, I walk in there and control the whole thing. And he's like, I can walk out with both the girls. And the dudes are like, yeah, take them. They're so mesmerized. He's like a magician. 
So all men here, now women, I also highly recommend that you learn this skill. Women just have to be careful of talking to strange men because men can misinterpret it. There's a famous study where women were told as cashiers at a grocery store to smile and be friendly to every dude who came, strangers. The amount of stalkers went so high they had to shut down the study. Because men, if women, so that's why women use resting bitch face to protect themselves. So women have to learn how to talk to other women because women are very catty to each other. Even right here, right now, I can tell a body language not all the women have talked to each other. Here's how women do. That dress kind of short, she's a slut. I don't want to know her. <laughs> women, men don't do that. I rarely see a dude like, brah, motherfucker got shorts on. I'm not, women do a different level. Women have their own illogical behaviors. Women, don't bring your cultural standards into things. Go talk to women who even look slutty. Once in a while, you're talking to the next Rihanna, who I've met Rihanna is probably, uh, people ask me the greatest celebrity I've ever met that made the biggest impression would be Rihanna. She's like a, you know women say they're a queen? You know, like, I'm a queen. I'm like, I've met a queen before. You meet Rihanna, you're like, this is like, a, she has like an aura, even stronger than any dude I've met. So, but if you met Rihanna, when she was doing one of her performances, she might have on something that you're like, oh, she's slutty. So women have a different set of, women bring cultural biases to interpersonal relationships with other women. Go meet a woman and befriend someone who's a slut. You may learn something that helps you in your own marriage, but it doesn't mean you have to become your best friend where you spend every waking moment with them. But when you bring your cultural biases, and this is men and women, to social settings, you judge things that you know not of. So that's why I said it's better to be a robot. I, when I, I was helping some guys get better with women, I was in Finland a couple months ago, and there was a guy. I wanted to say to him, you ever seen where Simon Cowell goes, you're the worst voice I've ever heard? You ever seen those where Simon used to say that? I want to say this, dude. You are the worst man on earth with women. You, you have won the award. I've never met a human. That, like, for example, Mystery would like teach, he teaches guys how to be playful with women. So he'll be walking, this famous pickup artist guy, he'll be walking, and if there's women behind him, he'll turn and be like, oh, are you guys stalking me? And just like open the conversation, but they're just walking behind. This dude would do it like this. Or stop stalking me. And they would leave, and I was like, Delivery, buddy, delivery. He was saying, are you stalking me? And I was like, so this guy was the worst guy I've ever met with women. But what I told him is let's do, there's an old rule, turn right. Uh, sorry, first on the right or first on the left. You walk into a building, first person on the right, talk to. So he was like, that won't work. I'm super picky. I only want to talk to the pretty women. And I was like, watch this. So we were in Helsinki, Finland, there's a May 1st, it's called the May, is it May 1st or May 5th? I was, I was there for a week, it's May 5th it's called. It's like their 4th of July. So there's a million people out in the city and we're on this hillside and I go, I'm gonna talk to every single group that walks by. So I'll talk to one, I talk to them, the second they leave the next group goes, he's like, oh, I don't believe, it was a weird guy, he was from French. French people are always fucking pessimistic, right? <laughs> Most mental illness of any Western country is France. So the new study just came out. So, so I just said, okay. So I talked to this guy. Nothing came of it, walks. I remember this dude comes by. It was like four guys and four girls. And he had like complete tattoos over his body. But they were kind of cool. Like four guys, four girls. But the dude, Finnish guys are pretty fucking tall. I couldn't tell there was this one pretty girl because they were in front. So I turned to the guy and I, Remember, when you do this rapid fire, which is great to do, you just say anything. So I was just like, you don't, because you can get into pickup and conversational social game where you're like memorizing routine, and that's also good to do. I have opening, they call them like openings, you can stack on top of each other. But I just turned to this guy, I was like, I've always wanted to get a tattoo, where'd you get that? And obviously the dude loved his tattoos because they put them on his face. So he stopped and he was kind of like, Oh yeah, like I got it. And he named something in Finnish. It's not an easy language. It's like, Street. 
And there was this girl that was way shorter than the guy. He was probably like 6'6". Six, six. And she comes out, and, and, and I, I saw her finally. And so I said, it's like, what did he say? And she's like, oh. And she spoke. She was super exotic. I actually posted her on my Snapchat. People were like, who is this woman? She was half Finnish, half Spanish. She looked like the cat woman, like Halle Berry, but like no contact. She had like green eyes. With it was, It's a wild look. Anything mixed with like Swedish. So she was like super beautiful. And I, I go, can you, can you DM it to me? Because I'm never going to find that street. So she's like, dit, dit, dit. DM me the address. Like a week later, I like went out to dinner with her. It's not like somebody I fell in love with. But that guy was blown away. I was like, talk to anybody. I didn't go, well, I'm only going to make the income of the five men that I spend the most time around. This guy's a face tattoo. Therefore, culturally, he's probably not that good at business. And blah, blah, blah. Fuck that. Rapid fire machine gun. Blah, 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 blah. If any of you were extra skilled, by the time this two days is over, you would have probed every person in this room. You can't do it by looks. That's where women mess up. Women are wacky, judgmental on looks. Men in general aren't going like, oh, that guy's better looking, I'll talk to him. Women, they call that the halo effect. So if you're a woman, try the rapid fire thing. Talk to every woman at this thing. Give everybody a chance, you never know. And if you're a dude, turn right. So when we go to the foundation room, just walk around and your friend tap you on the shoulder, turn right. Who's ever there, talk to them. And your goal is for women to not yet find you attractive. It should take 67 days to build any level of like street game. So you're going in with the intention tonight of people thinking you're a tad bit weird. It's okay. That's another thing that freaks men out. Women going, ew. Dude, the best guy I've ever seen in the world, this guy Drago who worked for me, he was, I asked him once, because he, I've never seen a dude that talented. Even Mystery's not like Drago, because Drago was a 10 in looks. He was like Chris Hemsworth with the ultimate social game. But he told me, I was like, how often do you get rejected? I thought he was going to say like 5% of the time. He's like, oh, like at least 50% of the time. And when I realized that the best looking dude in the world with the most social skills, he helped me build a whole nightclub. 40 to 100 women a night came to my club because he was the doorman. He was a magnet. It was like made me money. It was before OnlyFans, I had my doorman. When I took over that club, I fired everybody because it was an old kind of hostile Colombian group that owned the nightclubs. But Giorgio told me, whatever you do, don't fire Drago. And I was like, what? He's like, trust me, wait till the first night. He'd wear a tuxedo, be out front. It was like having like Brad Pitt, or it was like having, he looked kind of like Johnny Depp in his prime. It was like having DiCaprio as your doorman, prime Titanic DiCaprio, and you own a nightclub for 20 year old women. It's like, Pfft. but that guy still was at a 50% rejection rate. So this is where men go wrong. They have a, with women, you have a misconception of what a talented dude will do. You can be the best looking guy in the world with the most social skill and a billion dollars. Sometimes women, do you ever just get sick of men? It ain't a day where you wanna talk to a guy. Anybody, be honest. Women have those moments. They're not like men. Men are like always like, ah, I meet a pretty girl. Like, you could have like lost your arm and like a pretty girl. Like, I'll talk to you right now. Like, oh, I'll talk to you before I go to the hospital. Women are more selective. So men, tonight when you go into it, if there's a woman there at the foundation room, you should be at like 5% right now. So you should need to approach 20 women before one of them's remotely interested in you. And that's if you're a decent looking guy in decent shape. If you ain't good looking and you let your body run down, you can be at 1%, but just do it anyway. Because it also motivates you in the gym. I motivate some of my friends. I told them, put a picture on the fridge of the woman you find the most attractive that has you in the friend zone. And you, well, before you grab a Twinkie, before you grab ice cream, it's like, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What we call resignation is confirmed desperation. Uh, what we call desperation is confirmed. So I said, you open that, you eat the Twinkies and the cookies and the ice cream, you confirm the friend zone, buddy. Don't ever think women aren't visual. The good news is you can have an ugly face and make up for it in other things. So get your body right. But today you should be at a one to 5%. Unless, remember tonight I was with a friend, we went gambling. <laughs> 
Remember the two guys talking to the girl that thought they were 9.9? There's hookers in LA. I mean, in Vegas. These two dudes, Mindy went to the bathroom <laughs> and I was like, I should film these guys, but I don't want to because they don't know they're talking to a hooker. And she was like a nine and the dude's like a five. And boy, you let a man have confidence. They were spitting every line they knew. And I was thinking, bro, I want to go up to him and be like, you don't even need to talk. <laughs> Why are you talking? These guys were talking game for like 30 minutes to this girl. I was like, she just wants your money. Just get it over with, man. So tonight, if you meet a woman and normally nines don't approach you and talk to you for a long period of time, it's a hooker. So you can practice on that, but don't get too excited. Don't get too excited. I want you to walk up to a resting bitch face woman. I'm gonna give you one line, write this down. This is for men. Women do not have this problem. Women get too much attention from men. Any women here ever feel you get too much attention from men? Men, anyone here? Any man feel you getting too much attention from women? You're like my damn Instagram DM. I just can't handle the volume. Everywhere I go, I just wanna go to the gym and work out and like these beautiful women. Man, raise your hand if your life is impaired by approaches from women. Are you being approached too many times? Women, have you ever been bothered by approaches from men? Too much. Okay, so this is why we're talking, the sexes are different. Gender, I'm not gonna talk about, but we'll talk about the sexes. So men, here's a good opening line. I'm gonna give you a good and bad, this is my opinion. Um, and I do think all men, you should be able to approach an attractive woman, even if you're married, not to cheat, but beautiful women, also are often attached to the most powerful businessmen. That is a great, even if you don't care about, if you're a gay man, approach beautiful women because often the most powerful businessman in that hotel is gonna soon be coming up to her. So here's a couple horrible lines with women, in my opinion. Now, a lot of the guys teaching pickup on social media are so against what I'm about to say, but I've done okay with women in my day. I'll call bullshit on these guys. So I don't think you should do anything sexual or romantic at the beginning at all. Where did I get that? Well, my life experience, but also who's the most famous per man in human history with women? We call men who are good with women a certain name. We say they're a Casanova. Who has ever gone to the source of Casanova? He's so well known. He was born in the 1600s. We still talk about him 450 years later. But yet, there's some new dude with 17,000 social media followers, some dude who you don't, can't verify does well at all with women, and you're listening to his advice. What did Casanova say? Be chameleon one, be the, fl be, the uh, be the flame, not the moth. But another thing he said, I didn't like, basically, it's a long paragraph. You should read it. It's the memoirs of Gian Como Casanova. I've read it, I read it like once a year. He, he said, show women more than tell them. If you like a woman, show it by your actions, spend time with them. But I think it's a big mistake to walk up to a woman, one of you today at Vegas and say, I just wanted to say, I saw you across the room. I just, you know, you're really beautiful and I just wanted to introduce myself. I don't know who's teaching this on Instagram, but I would love to go film them in a double blind, scientific and just watch their numbers be decimated versus what I'm gonna tell you. So I just think it's wrong. First off, beautiful women are inundated. How are you gonna stand out by just saying he's beautiful? Number two, you're projecting low value to yourself. Number three, you're not engaging her mind, which puts you in the category of every dude on planet Earth. So a good one that I like is something when you're close to somebody, First off, I don't think a man should direct approach right up beeline to a woman. That's a sign of aggression in any primate. You, you, you don't go straight. Men are oftentimes, who, who's a man here who weighs over 220 pounds? Raise your hand. Okay, you weigh too. Female next to you, how much do you weigh? Okay, 105. So you're roughly over 1X, right? 2X what she weighs, correct? Okay, how would you feel of a beeline 460 pound dude? How tall are you? Uh, five. 
Five foot. How tall are you? Six foot. Okay. So you're, she's five sixths of you. So how would you like of the mountain who weighs about 450, the guy from the Game of Thrones, and he's about six foot eight, six foot nine. He just beeline approaches you. I saw you across the room. <laughs> I wanted to know, I found you pretty attractive, and I needed to introduce myself. You know what this is actually called? Dr. Buss is doing new scientific studies. It's actually called mind reading. Some people call it empathy. There's other words for it. To be good social, you have to get in the mind of a five-foot woman who weighs 105 pounds. Men are, that's where men are oblivious. Uh, to, uh, you're a grizzly bear coming up to a sheep and you're like, why are you running? <laughs> so much better today, try to position yourself in a natural position to where somebody is. Preferably you're with a group of people. So your high status men are around other people want to be with them. So subliminally, don't just move. <laughs> this is even worse. You're, you're 450 pound dude, okay? Women notice people at the club. Men are oblivious. Women have already staked out so you're a 450 pound, six foot eight dude who's been standing alone like this the whole time. No friends, nothing, and then you beeline. And it's horrible, you put a cortisol spikes through the roof. So better is to position yourself with a group of people, it can be men or women, preferably not a ton of dudes, or now you have gang warfare. What's even worse is if the mountain and his six buddies approach you. Found you pretty attractive over there. We just all needed to come talk to you. It was like a prison scene here, okay? So you walk up, walk position where you can speak over the shoulder. There's less aggressive. And say something like, me and my friend, we were just talking earlier. We had a little bit of an argument. Do you mind uh, settling it? Is it better to be wanted or needed and why? Pause. Now you're showing, I'm interested if you're a smart person. She knows you're talking to her because you find her attractive. Why do you need to state it? That's like Elon Musk walks up and you're like, Elon, I wanted you to know that I admire you as a business guy and that's why I want, he already knows that's why you're talking to him. He doesn't think it's because, you know, his name's Elon. So just get to the point. But elicit, so that's a good one. Is it better to be wanted or needed? But then shut up. Let the woman say what she's going to say. And from there, you can bounce around. So those are, I call those intellectual openers. I think it's better. I think, I, I, we'll talk about this tomorrow in my 13th thesis. I think women seek five things from a man. One is archetypes. One's the surfer archetype, that's your body. Lean muscle, like a surfer. Brad Pitt has that, and Chris Hemsworth, Australian, was a surfer that you guys rate, rated a 10. So that, Phenotype, body type should be surfer. Number two, women like Clark Kent, nerd by day, nerd by day. Intellectual, smart. Women, have you ever met a guy who was very attractive but eventually he was too stupid for you? Yeah. So you need to have an intellectual side. Third, a man should have uh, the James Bond vibe. It's not wealthy men that do well, it's James Bond. So your apartment doesn't have to be the richest, most expensive, your car doesn't have to be the nicest, but it needs to be classy. So at night, you need to have a, be able to switch like at a dinner party into a classy mode. That's like a king vibe, James Bond. But you don't have to be a billionaire. Then the fourth vibe uh, archetype of man should be, anybody, who else does well with women? Yes. You? Oh, you just raised your hand as if it was, no, hit, behind you. You were saying you do well with women. Not saying an archetype. <laughs> I like your confidence. I was like, what other archetypes do well? <laughs> Me. You are the archetype. No, the other one is a local celebrity. So it's good to go to the same restaurant and go to the same nightclub where you know the bouncers. You don't have to be a fan. And it's good to do it throw house parties because then you're the celebrity. Then lastly is the spiritual artist. Women are attracted to somebody who has depth too. Spirit, or musicians have a different depth. It's not just logical, and they do very well. So tonight, when you're meeting strangers, whether it's male or female, but if it is a female, you want to show you have all five archetypes. You don't want to be too nerdy, because women eventually don't want a total nerd. 
You don't want a total rock star dude who's like at a club partying all the time. So this opening line, one other opening line that I think can work well too, um, it's simpler. Talk to the guy, it's way better. 80% of the time, the guy, if it's a group of guys, is not actually dating her. Men, women who are single, a lot of times love to go out in groups because it keeps men off of them. So approaching women in groups is often better. And what not, here's the good news. If she is dating somebody, let's say you approach, there's a, they call this a mix set. Owen, I'm gonna pretend you're a female. Waylin, you're a male. So I approach the guy. The guy's not afraid of you, right? He now knows you're not trying to hit on his girl because he may be in the friend zone and secretly like her or maybe dated her. If she's beautiful it's, and, he, and she has Wei Lin, Owen's beautiful, he's probably a higher status man who may become a business ally. You talk to Wei Lin for a while. I don't like, but not too long because then sometimes the girl leaves and it's like, oh, my friend's been occupied. Then you say this, how do you two know each other? Then you'll find out the truth. If he says we're married or something, I'm not a big fan of, I don't think you should try to steal people's girls. I think it's weird. And you can get, every one in a hundred times you do that, you get shot in the face. Uh, it's not a good, Napoleon's main general, one of the main generals that, Napoleon was the first trillionaire. He got shot in the face for, he, he was sleeping with too many wives. Finally, someone's like, this guy's gotta die. He's sleeping with our wives, pow. So I talk to you, if you're dating or in a relationship, then I just talk to both of you and make an ally and a friend for the future. If I find out it's friend zone, you can talk a little bit more to her. It's a, you can't lose. You can't lose in that scenario. And if they're both boring, you move on in five minutes and you've honed your skills like bodybuilding, reps. You need, let's say you need 15,000 reps to really be strong in this world. You've repped out five minutes of it. 